Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. We have Robert Lang joining us. He's director of the Lindsay Institute and Brookings Mountain West. Here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R A N N V dot org. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Robert Lang. He is director of the Lindsay Institute and also director of Brookings Mountain West. He's also the author of Blue Metro's Red States that he authored along with Dave Damore and Karen Danielson. Pleasure to have you back on the program. Thanks for having me. So I wanted to start out talking about these innovation zones and you know what's potentially going to happen with blockchains and a portion of Story County. You've had a lot of experience uh, researching and writing about these kind of issues. Share with us what you know so we have a better understanding than perhaps we've gotten from the governor so far. So there is a sense by certain companies, and again, I say this as someone with a background in urban planning that looks at master plan community development. But if you take something like the Disney Corporation, you know, when Walt Disney first did Disneyland, he did it in the middle of Anaheim, and he built this palace of a place. You know, he built this uh, nationally and internationally recognized amenity, which is Disneyland. And right across the street, you got the like Razzmatazz Hotel going, and he couldn't control that. So when Disney went to Florida, he asked for extraordinary powers and received them from Orange and Osceola counties uh, in central Florida, where Disney became like an independent state, like the United States of Disney. And it worked out that Disney had so much excess land that even you know, well past uh, Walt Disney's death, he never lived to see the opening of Disneyland, Disney World, of course, in Florida. Well past his death, there was all these parcels left to develop. And Disney built its own little city called Celebration Florida, where you were actually technically a resident of Disney. Uh, but you, you know, you paid taxes, you paid your homeowners association fees. 
And it's often the case where you just want that kind of control in master planning. And that's the motivation, I think, that blockchain is looking for. It doesn't see that much capacity for doing master planning and story. And it wants to create and carve out its own space for it. Well, you know, it's kind of ironic because of all places, Story County has been the fastest to approve things and get things developed. Um, you would think that of all places that that would be a place um, that you could work with the county and, and get things done. So, so let me uh, push this a little further and ask, you know, was that good for the counties that Disney World carved out their space from? Um, did they benefit? Did they lose? You know, what, what was the end result there? It remade Central Florida into a large scale metropolis that specialized in theme parks and children's entertainment and family entertainment. So the, it's been a net positive, certainly. You know, in the case of Story, you're right. It's a county that is so good at fast approval that North Las Vegas, as you know, and you've had Ryan Juden on the show, the city manager, copied it, copied their methods, said, you know, how do you, how, how do you get this stuff through the pipeline so quickly? So Story has been good, but Story doesn't have a lot of background in doing plan unit development outside of the industrial park. And it's a little bit different when you're doing it with uh, mixed use housing than it is when you're doing, you know, just straight industrial development. You know, look at a case like uh, Henderson, Nevada. And Henderson turned a giant chunk of the city over to the Greenspun family through the American Nevada Corporation, and they built Green Valley. Now, at one point, they were thinking of calling Henderson Green Valley, and that's how dominant Green Valley became. You didn't have to, you know, sort of chunk it out of Char Clark County, but really sort of Henderson gave up rights to control development within that master plan space. But most of Henderson's growth has been master plan. Um, should there be some kind of clawback if, um, you know, things don't work out the way that they are planned? Because, I mean, for example, and no offense to blockchains, but I mean, they bought the land several years ago. They got 67,000 acres, and so far they built their own building, and that's about it. Now, I'm, you know, now we know that development takes years, can take decades, so that's not a slam on them. But if they don't develop what they say they're going to develop, should there be some kind of clawback in the state law that says if you don't do this by a certain amount of time to a certain level that that reverts back to story county or you know some other governance i mean that's up to the legislature it depends on how much pushback you get from the county and from local electeds that are based out of the county or state reps that are based out of the county and you know that's open for negotiation i think uh no one says it has to be a carte blanche but it would be good to have a kind of, you know, a company like blockchain develop what it considers to be a contemporary urban space. And I know they've secured water rights, for example, too. Um, it would be good for them to, to do that as a sort of additional dimension to the growth in Northern Nevada, because what it does is it's, it's finally under a single unified structure, uh, an entire integrated space. Right now, you've got most people living west of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Park. And, you know, the, the park kind of isolated in an, in an island of really just industrial development and all the housing is west. So this is a real chance to create a totally integrated space. And that's the new fashion. That's what people want in these companies. They don't feel like driving 30 miles out to an industrial facility to work. They want to, you know, live, eat, play, work, everything in the same space. You know, it's interesting. Um, for several years now, um, the Tajarino Industrial Center has sent out maps that show the industrial park as the center of the region, with Reno Sparks, Fallon, Fernley, um, all being uh, on the outside edge of the park. So it's interesting that you would put it like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, everybody thinks they're the center of everything, and it doesn't surprise me that, you know, they're the core and all the population is peripheral. In an economic sense, if you're a worker in one of those facilities within the, you know, the Tahoe Reno Center, yeah, I mean, in a, in a way, you're dependent on story for income. It's brought story firmly within the Reno metropolitan area because it's joined Washoe County through commuting patterns. And this is just an effort, I'd say, next generation. Okay, we've got the office park. And... As a competitive advantage, that doesn't really do much around the country. There's lots of office parks. But what would be a competitive advantage is a new city built from scratch using blockchain technology and having this, you know, live, work, play dimension to it that right now you really don't have in northern Nevada. You have some of it in southern Nevada, 
because there are industrial sections of even Green Valley or Summerlin, for example, has a really a serious downtown core that's heavily mixed use, high density housing, mixed tenure rental and owner, and the complexity of development that you find in Southern Nevada. In terms of the fine grain mixtures of uses you just don't find yet in Northern Nevada, be a nice start to it. Um, how do you feel um, the whole, and I, I, I realize that um, uh, the blockchains does not work um, on, you, you know, they have a different form of blockchain, which is the Ethereum blockchain, um, but mixed into all of this is Bitcoin. And we've seen uh, Tesla and Elon Musk buying vast quantities, what, a billion and a half dollars worth of Bitcoin. Does, does this concern you at all with the volatility of the value of Bitcoin? I mean, you know, that's not my judgment to make because I'm not pulling the trigger on a decision of whether or not this, this is a go. I'm not working directly in government, nor am I involved in, you know, the management of the park, or nor am I involved in local government up there. But I'd say, you know, all, all consideration should be given. Disney obviously had an incredibly solid track record. I mean, Disney's case was simple. We did this in California, and we didn't plan for a free rider problem, is what it's called because we created this super facility and then you could literally walk across the street and somebody who got lucky enough was like hitting the lottery of just having a lot of land that they could sell to a hotel chain across the street was a winner. We're gonna move to Disney World now and do an entire integrated community from the ground up. You had Disney already did a one-off on this. I mean, nobody had to say, well, tell me about this Disneyland. You know, it sounds fascinating. It's like, come on out, it's, it's in the ground. And you can see our problem. So I don't think Central Florida officials had a hard time understanding the concept either of the company or the motivation. And I think this is a little bit more elusive because it's bound up in such, you know, sort of futuristic technology. But it's a straightforward thing in the case of a company wanting that sort of domain over a space. That's not unusual. Um, should Elko County or Story County, where they do have vast tracts of land, uh, that would match the uh, governor's um, idea of 50,000 acres. Um, should they be concerned that something like this could happen to them and they could lose a part of their county as well? You can say it's concerned, but if the industrial facility comes and employs thousands of people and works out to be an exporter from the region and lifts all kinds of opportunity and wealth within that space, then it's a win. I mean, it's a trade-off. Do you Are you willing to take some loss of control and grant some autonomy to a company in exchange for them creating a total living environment. You know, in the case of Orange County and Osceola County, Florida in the 1960s, the decision was yes. And I think that most people in that region would say that was the transformative development that shifted Orlando's position from a kind of place that had some air bases and so on, was kind of you know built around citrus to one that became as dominant a tourist destination as Las Vegas is. So it depends on if you look at it as a loss, I guess if your whole idea is that you want as much power in the space that you operate from as possible, but you also have the opportunity to trade some of that in exchange for somebody's willingness to develop the land, and that ought to be considered. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back much more with Robert Lang after this timeout. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bargain because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Because of UMC, there's a wide open road ahead of me. Because of UMC, she can grow up with her twin sister. Because of UMC, I'm here to help you. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Get in on the action at the Tamarack Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed. Now through February 27th, plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. 
Enjoy exceptional value and a comfortable atmosphere at Reno's newest steakhouse, Nevada Steak. Ooh, your good times at Tamarack. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue with Robert Lang. Uh, he's the author of Blue Metro's Red States, along with David Demore and Karen Danielson. And um, you came up with an interesting statistic in our conversation the other day um, that I don't think most people realize, which is how important gaming still is to Northern Nevada when politicians for so long have been saying, you know, we, we've, we've transitioned away from gaming. Now, now we've diversified into all these other areas. And I'll also throw in that that goes to my point to you over several conversations about how hard it is to diversify to the point of never having an economic downturn when gaming in Las Vegas has a problem. So tell, tell people about what's really going on in Northern Nevada gaming. Sure, I mean, yeah, as much success as Northern Nevada has, and it's considerable towards economic diversification, there is still more tourism there as a share of the economy than a typical city. And so when you have a tourist-led recession as we're in now, because COVID just destroyed tourism, and affected regions throughout the country, you see that uh, the impact on a place like Northern Nevada is fairly substantial, not as, not as critical an impact as it is on Orlando or Las Vegas or Atlantic City or Honolulu, but nonetheless bigger than you'd expect, you know, given the amount of investment that's been made towards diversification. And that came out of a, a piece that the Brookings Institution did, Aaron Klein, and uh, Ember Smith, who was a former UNLV honor student who now works at, uh, at the Brookings Institution, did a piece and they looked at, and this is really interesting too, Latino heavy markets with tourist economies like Orlando, like Las Vegas, and even to some extent Reno, were the most impacted in the recession. And so the recession is being felt in the tourist economy you know, in, in places throughout the country, but it's especially focused in regions that are more reliant than average on tourism, which certainly characterizes Las Vegas and to an extent Reno. And then, you know, Las Vegas to a great extent because of the demographic makeup of the county and in, to a lesser extent, but not, you know, not noticeable extent or somewhat noticeable extent, uh, Reno is also impacted that way. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of movement towards diversification and a lot of success I'd still pay attention to the restoration to the extent that you can of the tourist economy. Um, is one thing happening that we're not seeing a lot of publicity about, which is, um, are, are we seeing properties on the Las Vegas Strip in particular, um, retooling the way they do business to be more efficient and potentially therefore have less jobs for people to come back to? Yes, they are, and it's worrisome. And Las Vegas is going to have to find and redirect some share of its employment toward the notion that there's some non-recoverable jobs out of this recession. Because with each time, each time you have a kind of crisis like this, people can calculate a new way to do business. And it leaves a residual effect in that we've obviously accelerated the amount of telecom and the respectability of going home and doing work. You know, for years it was this notion that. Oh, you're working from home. What are you in your socks all day? And then COVID strikes and suddenly you can really gauge whether or not there was productivity at home. And you know, the, a lot of companies know that's true. And they're saying we're going to accept a more footloose workforce. So same with, you know, gaming. You, you can do things remotely that you didn't think you could do before. And to the extent that reduces demand for employees and you'll restructure accordingly and you'll lose some share of employment in Las Vegas in the tourist sector. Now the question is, to what extent could that be redeployed? Luckily, areas are blooming like logistics, healthcare, business services, and even some technology. So Las Vegas was in the process of actually doing a decent job diversifying its economy. And it diversified within its core economy, but we'll see if it continues. All right, let's take another break. We'll be back more with Robert Lang after this timeout. Get in on the action at the Tamarack Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed. Now through February 27th, plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bar again because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch? 
your flat screen and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. Get in on the action at the Tamarack Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed. Now through February 27th, plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Robert Lang. He is director of the Lindsay Institute and also director of Brookings Mountain West and the author of Blue Metro's Red States. So an, an interesting fact coming out of San Francisco, for example, is that rents are decreasing so dramatically that it's actually cheaper now to live in San Francisco than it is in Oakland. Um, because so many buildings are empty, they're offering free rent for a certain amount of months. Um, do you see any kind of trend like that affecting Southern Nevada? Yeah, I mean, Southern Nevada is different in this recession in that despite the fact that we've had a loss in employment, and you would think that that would translate into a, a drop in housing costs and that people would exit the region, people are still showing up to Las Vegas in decent numbers. We still have a lot of internal migration, especially from within the US to Las Vegas, less foreign migration than we've had in the past. And most of these folks, by the way, come with skills. I think Clark County is right behind Maricopa County for people arriving with EAs and above. And many of them are bringing wealth with them from previous employment. And many of them are retaining jobs that they hold in firms where they work in remote locations from Las Vegas. So it's a little different than San Francisco, which had hyper expensive housing and has a, a reservoir of commercial office space that may be convertible if they're creative enough to do so into housing and to relieve some of the problems in the long term in San Francisco, which hasn't built new housing in ages. And this is one of the why, reasons why that region repels so many folks and they move to places like Nevada with lower housing costs traditionally, lower taxation, lower regulation. Um, I want to change to a different topic here. Um, it's been interesting to watch the Boring Company um, start with the convention center um, to have transportation within there, and then expanding it to uh, Resorts World and uh, Encore um, for short trips for conventioneers to get to the convention center. But if you go onto the Boring Sites website, they actually not only have a plan for all of Las Vegas going out to the airport, downtown, et cetera, but there is also a line that goes all the way to Los Angeles. How real versus fanciful do you think that is? That's their call, you know, if they think they've got the technology to do that. I suspect that that would be a surface link as opposed to a below surface link. Uh, it would be ambitious for Boring to just provide comprehensive mass transit throughout the Las Vegas Valley down the strip into the airport. The good news is, there's been a rules change since the Biden administration came into office, and you're allowed to bring your transit system right into the airport grounds proper, which was prohibited for a while because of kind of concerns over security with 9-11. You should see cities like Salt Lake and Denver had to really involve themselves in careful negotiations with the federal government to get that done. Well, Boring doesn't have to go through any of that to get into Las Vegas' space as it, as it once did. 
So I would say for boring, you know, step one, just prove the viability in Las, Ve you know, in Las Vegas. And of course, you know, it's free to have a map on the site to say, we're so ambitious, we see this as inter-metropolitan transportation, not just intra-metropolitan transportation. Um, you know, we've seen so many attempts over the years, and it's still going on, to get high-speed rail into California from Las Vegas. Um, do you think potentially this, you know, because look, look at the speed at which they were able to do the convention center, um, that this actually could be a reality and might even beat high-speed train? It could be, and there's still proposals for a, a conventional surface transportation link that's a high-speed rail as well. And that's always run into all sorts of difficulties. Um, and in this round, might be fortunate because the federal government is switching is switching gears and the new transportation secretary, um, Pete Buttigieg, seems very interested in uh, high-speed uh, surface links around the United States. And so Las Vegas to Los Angeles would be one of those. And, and that is a conversation for another day about Mr. Buttigieg being transportation secretary. But I always enjoy you coming onto the program, sir, and I highly recommend Blue Metro's Red States. It's available everywhere where good books are sold, including Amazon. And thank you for doing this. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to you soon, and we'll be right back. Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culp of Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they will. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.